Hey, welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. My name's Sean, and uh, we run a company called Soda Solar, and we are working on a Leisure Unity travel van, doing a lot of upgrades to it. Some things like replacing the refrigerator, replacing the air conditioner, but in this video, we are going to be upgrading the Victron solar system. In fact, there's not much of a solar system on there now. There is something, but we're gonna be making it even better, even bigger, so that it can run an air conditioner all night. So if you want to see how that happens in something so small, stick around and uh, see for yourself, I guess. Here's the lay of the land here. This is the spaces we have to work with. We've got an existing inverter here. That is going out of here. We got some, yeah, we got some equipment here. That's getting out of here. We got this guy, my son Levi. He's not getting out of here. We're going to keep him. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got these batteries here. Those are getting out of there. Out of there. We're going to be replacing that with a 460 Epic heated lithium. And we're going to try and find room for another one. And I think that might be here where we got some wood storage. Uh, with, these are the compartments we have to work with. We're going to try and put a 3000 watt Victron Multi Plus solar charger, battery monitor, other monitoring equipment. It's going to be a blast, right, Levi? Yes, Sensei. <laughs> And then uh, to tease those other things I was talking about, we're going to be replacing that refrigerator and replacing the air conditioner with a EcoCool uh, by Gree model, which is much quieter, much more energy efficient. It's going to be great. It has a heat pump, all that fun stuff. I got some other stuff to do, and this guy needs to get to ripping all this stuff out. We're getting going on the solar on the Unity here, and as you can see, we've got some solar panels that uh, at one point produced energy, but uh, as you can tell, they don't really do much anymore. And this is one of the reasons we're not a big fan of flexible solar. Uh, they just don't hold up and they don't shed the dirt very well. Uh, yeah, I think these are academic at best. So I think there's three or four of them up there. Levi here is gonna be pulling them off and we're gonna be replacing these, I believe with at least four shadow flux panels, maybe more, we'll see what we can fit. Uh, we'll also be, replacing the air conditioner, but that's going to be in a separate video. So look for that as well. But all right, I'm going to leave you to it, bud. And I'm going to turn off that fan. Don't you worry. Sweet. Levi has done a great job and gotten the flexible panels off and you can definitely see what they do to the underside there. That is not all just uh, dirt and debris. That actually is some discoloration that doesn't come off from the heat. We're going to do the best we can. So we're gonna clean this roof up first before we put the new panels down. All right, figured it's uh, time to do a little bit of update on this. As you can see, we've been moving things along here a little bit. Uh, we do have most of the main connections put together here. Uh, we ended up using an open connection on this DC distribution block to feed uh, all the interior lighting as well as the generator start power. And that's gonna be coming from here. If we do it right anyway, Again, the multi-plus is going to go in here. One change that I'm going to be making a little bit here is uh, I think we're going to put a fan. See where that hole is back there? I'm going to put a fan there just to suck the air out. And yeah. And then uh, we're going to have a board being mounted up on the ceiling here. I'm working on that. I'll show you how this is coming together here. So multi-plus can be laying on its back there. This board is going to be mounted upside down. I'm going to put a cleat at the back so that'll just clip into and then we just got two screws or three that'll secure it here. So that way this maintains its accessibility. And yeah, that's going to be going together there. Uh, something I thought about here. So I'm big into accessibility any way we can and being able to get this cover off is going to be a pain in the butt when it's in there. So I got some thumb screws. That'll fit in there. Let's hope. This is actually the first time I put them in. There we go. And I'll probably just do the back two here because the cover just needs to be held on. There we go. And now we don't need to get a tool in there. You just got to get your hand in there. And that'll be fine. And then we will be using basically these two uh, studs here, the two sets of positive and negative. Kind of think of it almost as a uh, bus bar. So we're going to have four aught cabling coming in and then two gauge ca cabling coming out and feeding this. So that's how 
The solar charger, oh, we're gonna lose that. The solar charger is going to feed uh, the battery system via this here. Just, we kinda had to get real creative to do that, but I've been thinking about that more and more. So we got our main 400 amp disconnect there. That's gonna protect the multi-plus. Another thing we're gonna do here is, uh, so that fan over there, I'm gonna control that with the K1 relay, which is here. So when the fan on this turns on, that other fan will turn on. Otherwise, it won't. So I think that'll work out good. That's about all I have here. Uh, oh, the other thing I think we're gonna do, we're gonna be using these uh, giant Wago connectors here. So you can have three wires coming in, three wires coming out. But if we assemble it correctly, I'll show you here how it would work. We just got normal Wagos here putting this together. But give me a minute and I'll transfer them to these. So here is how these Wago connectors will look when they're on here. And so one side is on your, one of your main wires, the other side is on the other. And then what you can do is, and then, then there's another connector here that would go to the inverter. But here's the beauty of this, is if something were to ever happen with this system, we can just pop these off. So if you hook them up right, where they're opposites, now they can just go together like that. It's really hard to do with one hand, but you get the idea. Actually, that would be proof of how good of a system is. I can do it one-handed, almost, almost. There we go, got it. So then you see white, white, copper, copper, black, black, and now the system's bypassed. So I think that's so slick. So we're gonna be using these a lot more. All right, here's the uh, solar, all done. Levi did a great job. And uh, I've got four of the Shadow Flux 120 watt panels. Uh, the math on that is 480 watts. I don't think we would have been able to fit too much more with leaving a little bit of room here to stand. So I think this is where it's gonna have to be. Nice job, Levi. Thank you. All right, this has been in the shop for quite a while and I can say at this point we are done. We're gonna pull it out here shortly. All right, in here we've got the one 460 amp hour battery, the smart shunt, and we got some foam in there to keep it from getting out of control. And uh, we again reused the existing distribution block in there. So we'll just put that back where it belongs. Put that guy down. All right, and then uh, in here, oh, got away from us. We got uh, all our equipment in there and we do got that cooling fan in there. And we just got done doing an absorption charge. I know this is not as clean a wiring as we typically like to do, but we only had so much room to make all this happen. So this is the way this ended up. We got a 460 battery, doing our Wagos there, so that way we can bypass this entire system if we need to or want to. Um, got thumb screws on our multi-plus here. Got a breaker here feeding that main distribution panel over there. Got our main die hole disconnect. Uh, again, the solar charger, Servo GX, all the way up there. And that's just mounted in with a cleat at the back, so two screws, it comes down, and we can pull all this out. That was put in there after the multi-plus, so I know I can get it out. Again, I put this together with the idea that I would be the one servicing it, so um, we did the best we could here. So. Overall, really happy. It's, we've been testing it here for almost a week and really happy with it. Coming inside here, we got, uh, again, Servo GX put in, or the display. We've got, uh, we had to swap out the air conditioner uh, controls for just a furnace only control. And we went up here with the uh, um, air conditioning controls. Really like the way that came out. You do, of course, have the remote still. Then also, oh, let's turn this off. We don't need that. Then also as a part of this system, we did the fridge upgrade. Used to be a uh, Dometic. Now it's a 120 only, and it only uses about 70 watts. Not much at all. It only runs probably about 25 to 15% of the time. So very light on power usage. And we also had to move the, 
the uh, microwave up to make all that work. But really happy the way this came out. Got some nice uh, trim work we did there to match the maple finish. I think that came out really nice. So yeah, how about that? So this is a little different project than we typically do uh, as far as uh, all the custom work we did, but we really enjoyed it. And thank you for sticking all around and uh, following along, all that stuff. We love having you here. But uh, if you want anything like this done, check us out at sotasolar.com. Let's see, this sweatshirt's getting a little old, but it's spelled kind of like that, except it's got a proper R on the end there. And uh, here's my son, Levi. He helps me out. We got Dave also helping us out. For, uh, he did a lot of work on this. So from all of us, uh, of course, Bear, he helped as well. Uh, from all of us at Soda Solar, we will uh, see you next time. Thanks.